All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 20, to 2024's first ever session of TPN Tax Talks. I am Cheska Cordero from Insightful Accountant and your host for today. Now, before we actually start, I'd actually like to go ahead and ask a question of the day, just as everyone's coming in and settling down in front of their computers, their phones, or tablets. If you're in the car, stay safe. But actually, a really quick, funny story about this. I got to turn the tables on Gary yesterday because he was one of the speakers. Well, he was one of the panelists for a webinar. So it was really cute seeing him also have to do that. Well, to the question, I don't have I don't actually have anything in mind yet for a New Year's resolution. So I know it's pretty cliche. I just want to get a few. I, uh, I, just want, I just wanted to ask around, get a few ideas. Do you guys have a New Year's resolution? I have two, one personal, one business, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. <laughs> but if I'm giving a suggestion, one thing that I've done for the last few years, which I actually really like as opposed to a resolution, is I pick like a word for the year. So something oh. that feels like all encompassing of like my overall kind of goals or focus or what have mm -hmm. you for the year. So um, I like that. I feel like it was a little bit less like I'm going to fall off the wagon in the first yeah. few weeks to just say, okay, this is like kind of more of like my mantra. It's for the my year. theme. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I refuse to make any of these, so I'm going to continue <laughs> to be my true sarcastic self and the badass oh. that I am, and that's what I'm going to do. That's so. great. We I love like that. it. I'm just I think that's a it. good resolution for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would love that. I would do that, too. Perfect. I, just, I feel like I, I already do anyway, so. <laughs> there we All go. Right. Again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to 2024's first ever session of TPN Tax Talks. Again, I'm Cheska Cordero from Insightful Accountant and your host for today. Now, in this TPN Tax Talks, we'll be going over guerrilla marketing for your small firm with the wonderful Christine Gervais. And we have quite the exciting session today because Christine's brought a very special guest with her and say hi, everyone, to Brandy Jordan. Now, I'll have them introduce themselves in just a little bit after I cover a few of the housekeeping items. There is actually no CPE for this, as it is just a 30-minute webinar. And if you have any questions, you guys know the drill. Put them in the Q&A panel and be specific. Don't just say what you mean. You got to ask, hey, Christine, what do you mean by you put up a theme for yourself for a whole year? mainly because they might not get to your question right after you put them in there. And we'll also be sending a link to the recording after the webinar. And it's also going to be up on our YouTube page within about 24 hours. So if you want to go check it out over there, you'll also find many other webinars that might be of interest to you. I'll also be putting that link to our YouTube channel right into our chat, as well as the copy of the slide deck. So watch out for that. Also, do not forget that we have one other webinar in store for you this month, and that is Marketing Talks with Janelle Sikora. Whether you're interested in practice management, marketing, everything tax, or all things QuickBooks, Insightful Accountants got something for you. And you can go check out all our webinars that are available to you on our educational webinars page on our site. And do not worry, I'll also be putting that link into our chat. And I will, I will be rolling out all those links and the copy of the slide deck throughout the webinar in case you might have missed it the first time I put it in there. And actually, that's it for me. You guys, welcome and thanks for being here. Thank you. <clears throat> thanks for having us. Okay, so always the hardest part of all of these is getting the slide deck up and getting the technology going. So let me get this started. <clears throat> Okay, perfect. And I am going to keep the chat open as well as the Q&A open, and I'll keep an eye on that as we're talking. So if you have any questions, pop them in that Q&A box. I'm so glad that you mentioned Janelle's webinar. Janelle is amazing. So you guys, I think today will probably be like a little bit of a teaser for her webinar later this month. If you are looking for more of what Brandy and I are going to talk about today or help putting that into action, I highly recommend that you hop on Janelle's webinar also. <clears throat> so hello. Welcome. Thank you all of you for being here. Um, I know some of you are faithful tax talk attenders, but if we've never met before, my name is Christine Gervais. I've been a licensed CPA for almost 15 years, running my own practice for quite a while now. And the topic that we're going to talk about today is one that I think all of us as practitioners and small business owners need to have in our toolbox. And I'm going to just kind of give myself a little bias and say that 
it might not be a topic that we're super great at naturally as accountants. And so we have a non-accountant here who's going to help direct us. Um, Brandy Jordan. My dogs are going to join the call. Brandy Jordan. Brandy is a former coworker of mine, incredible colleague, like just wonderful human, uh, so pro proclaimed unicorn, and she really is kind of a Jane of all trades. She's currently serving as the catalyst at Woodward, and I will let her kind of talk about what that catalyst is. But suffice it to say, you guys, that she's awesome at basically everything. She's used <laughs> to working with accounting firms, and she brings a lot to the table. But one of the things that I really appreciate her for is her creative brain, her innovative thinking, and she has some really amazing tips to share with us today about how, from a small practice perspective and on a budget, we can help to further our marketing efforts, further our sales goals, et cetera. So without further ado, Brandy, if you <laughs> want to give more of an introduction Thanks. of yourself before we dive in. I'm just going to take you everywhere with me to introduce me, like <laughs> as I walk in, like a herald. Um, but, right. Uh, no, my role as a catalyst, I'm working um, in implementing some project management solutions at Woodard, really working on operations and streamlining processes, um, doing team training, company OKRs, those types of things. Uh, my experience is wide and varied. Feel free to look at my LinkedIn if you feel the need. Um, but I have been within the accounting industry space for about seven years now, other than that, several other industries. But I am all over the board from art to design to marketing to operations to training to facilitating, you name it. I got you. So that's the best part that. because I think that every time I've asked you a question, you are able to really answer it from like a big picture perspective, um, which makes what we're going to talk about today so much more useful because um, when we talk about guerrilla marketing or really like guerrilla anything in small business, what we mean by that is that it's unique and creative. So it's something that's kind of out of the box, which is, you know, we have innovative and unconventional. Um, this chalkboard kind of made me laugh uh, when I was looking for like examples. For, it's a great example. It is, right? And it immediately worked on me because I saw it and I was like, I immediately want to go into whatever place mm -hmm. this is pointing towards. Uh, but the point is also low cost, right? Because mm -hmm. if we had all of the money in the world, our marketing budgets would be able to do, you know, an unlimited number of things. But realistically, that's not what we're talking about. So how do we maximize our effort for our dollars? So why don't we start there? Do you want to start like high level, you know, some of the things that you think are the lowest budget, highest impact items when we start to think about how to promote our small businesses? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to get too crazy on any of this. Like one of the biggest ones would be content marketing. I mean, what better way to market yourself and pivot yourself as an expert in the field than teaching people? those types of things. Um, you get share real world examples, share case studies, um, all, all that also goes beyond your self-promotion. Um, another thing that is also ready and tangible is you're upselling. You have clients. What more can you do for them? You know, let's talk to them. Can, are there more services? We're all doing advisory. We're all learning new things. We're all streamlining and pivoting. What more can you offer and upsell? Um, so easy. And you don't, it doesn't cost you anything to do that except your time. Um, there's, I know many firms have a wealth of old leads sitting there. I mean, who has time to always call when you're working with your clients? So you have a bucket of leads that could be worked, um, and revisit them, start an email campaign, make a quick phone call, a touch base, anything there, um, that you don't have to pay for marketing budget to get those leads. You already have them. Um, one of the things it's a necessary evil in my opinion, um, cause I'm not a, you know a very social media person, but it is what it is. It's a powerful tool. It's not just a platform because you can connect dynamically that way. There's so many different outlets to kind of touch base through social media, um, videos, responding to comments, starting conversations, joining communities, getting out there um, and making your firm and you be a voice. Um, and then I think the last one would be collaboration. Um, and what I mean by that is like work with, it's not about competition anymore. You can work together. Find um, businesses that share like a similar target art audience 
and coordinate your promotions, do joint events, share your campaigns. It creates a win-win situation um, and, and expands your uh, exposure throughout the community or industry or niche, whatever that you are in for that realm and amplifies the message on both of your accounts. Um, so those are some good high level ones to start that are easy, that doesn't cost you much, um, just some of your time. So I think all of this is awesome. And I have a bunch of deeper dive questions on these. Let's just start from the top. And I know that you in particular have done a lot of work around creating these types of education as marketing tools. Mm -hmm. And I think that this one, I'm speaking for myself, but I assume I'm also speaking for some other people that are here today. This one I think can be overwhelming in that we don't do it because we don't know where to start, right? Like, do I need to create a YouTube channel? Does this have to be video education? I guess what are, if you're going to break it down for, I'm a brand new person and I think, okay, great. My clients could definitely use some education. That's a no brainer. All of our clients could use some education. <laughs> That's why um, they need us. Yes. But how do, how do you break that down for me? So it's not so overwhelming in terms of where do I start with tools? What does that look like? Um, well, for, and you were talking on the education piece. Yeah. So within that, first of all, decide what you're comfortable with. Not everybody is comfortable jumping on a video and yeah. you know, showing their face. Others are not comfortable writing. It's not their strength. They would rather talk it through. So figure out that part first. And then from there, you don't have to start big with some big webinar like this. If you want to be on video, you can start off small with a 10 second tip tricks. This is my day type quick video and post it up on your social media. And that video can go on all, any platform that you're using. And, and by any, you do not need to use every social media platform out there. Take the time <laughs> to decide what you really want. But for example, if you do a quick 10 second video that can go up on your Instagram, it can go up on your LinkedIn, it can go up on your Facebook. If you have Twitter, if you have TikTok, and I know some people are against TikTok, but it has its place. Um, but those are, I mean, you don't have to start off big. And it also doesn't cost much to do a Facebook Live if video is your thing. The other piece is we all have websites. And if you want to write, there's blogs. Start your own blog content. And if you don't have one, if you are smaller, you can actually publish straight to LinkedIn because I've done that for other people in the past where you get your article, publish it right there. It's a way to get your voice out there. So I would say, don't get overwhelmed thinking about there's all this stuff that I don't want to do. Think about what you want to do. How do you want to project, project yourself and start small? Is it a blog? Is it you know writing a snippet and posting it? Is it taking a short video? Or are you ready to dive in? Start a Facebook Live, start a webinar. I mean, there's a lot of options within that. And both of those can go to your social media posting, which also yes. makes sense. Those are such great tips. And I was, I'm sort of like chuckling to myself as you're saying this, because I used to, when I first started my practice, do, I called it Financial Tip Friday. And it was, it was Facebook Live every Friday morning. And it was very, very quick, right? Like, so it was, and generally around something that I would have seen maybe pop up that week, like a question that I was seeing my clients consistently ask or like an issue, like something that I was consistently seeing people misinterpret or do wrong. So I would do this really quick video. I would go live. It would be less than five minutes. I would talk about my tip or my suggestions on that particular topic. And what was funny about it, because I think this stops a lot of us too, was like, the more disheveled I was, the more views that these Facebook <laughs> Because it's authentic. Get. That's the other piece. You don't yeah. need to do a big production on this. People are going to relate to you more by you being you. And you are your brand. You are your firm. And they're going to, the, the market that you are after will relate. Um, yes. So there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with being human and being authentic and being in the moment. It just makes you more tangible and real and relatable. And people want to talk to you more, which is the yes. whole point. I love that because I think that does stop a lot of us. We're like, well, why well, can't do this? I can't do this. I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. I think I got like over 500 views on one of the ones that I did where I had just left the gym and I had like popped in the car and I just hopped on really quick, like post gym in my car to do my financial tip Friday, but people loved it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of leads me into, I'm going to skip down to social media presence for a second. I think the reason that that in particular had so much 
traction around it was because I did it every Friday. And mm-hmm. so it became something that people could expect. And consistency on social media is another thing that many of us, I think, underestimate what that means. So can you t- give us a couple of tips or maybe explain what you mean when you say consistent, because it's not once a month that we're putting no, content. That's on. not enough. I mean, it's absolutely not. You're going to lose your audience. Um, The whole point with consistency refers to like maintaining an active and engaged online presence. This does not mean that you have to be on every day. If you want to be on every day, by all means, I'm not, nobody's going to stop you, but it's not a requirement. Don't think that this is your daily task that you have to do. Um, There are various recommendations out there, like platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn, maybe posting three to five times a week, Twitter, like five to seven times, like Twitter or that type of platform is very much more conversational and quick, right? To post It's very quick. But if that's too much, that's okay. The point is, is that you need to be out there on a regular basis. So whether it is your day, your weekly Friday, and that's what you can do right now, then do your weekly Friday and do it consistently because that will be the expectation and people will see it. If you're like, I can do twice a week, great, but maintain it. Um, so whatever it is that you're doing, whether it is posting an article or whether it's throwing up a short video or, you know, taking the time to engage your audience, like just p- responding, right? All of that puts you out and into their algorithms and all that social media jibber talk there. Um, but it, that's what is needed. It's the consistency and cadence and you can set that cadence and whatever's going to work for you is best. But at minimum weekly, I would not go less than that. Okay, great. That's helpful. Something that has helped me in the past is to write out like a social media calendar, you know, Mm -hmm. so if I'm going to do something every week to have that written out, like at least a month in advance so that I'm not feeling like I'm getting, you know, writer's block when I, when it's time to post in the past, have you, and I, I, we're going to get off social media because I know you said it's not your favorite thing, but it's a necessary evil. (laughs) It is. Yeah. It's not my favorite thing either. And I think honestly, I probably wouldn't be on it at all or nearly as much if it wasn't for our business. But, um, do you have resources that you use or ideas for exactly that? Like how to come up with topics for the social media Mm -hmm. posts to try to avoid that writer's block? Oh yeah. Um, there's actually some tools that you can use. Some of them have like the freemium thing, right? Like there's a free version. You don't necessarily have to pay, but there's like content curation tools. Um, Feedsy, Pocket and BuzzSumo are a couple of those freemiums and they can help curate content for you. Um, so you kind of put in the parameters of what you're looking for and it brings up, Hey, here's what's going on in this industry. Here's what's been posted. Here's what's been shared. So it's something that you can quickly grab. Um, the other thing is we're already monitoring a lot of trends in our industry anyways. Um, because things change constantly, regulations change, tax laws, whatever the case may be. So you're already on top of it. So you're getting industry publications, you're getting newsletters, mm-hmm. relevant blogs, all that you can share. Um, it's super easy and it helps cross-functional sharing that, with that stuff as well. You can even set up Google alerts um, to tell you when like different things are being posted. Um, another thing um, I've done in the past is like themed content calendars. Um, So you craft posts around different theme days or months that are relevant to either your niche or even ones that align with your firm values, Um, like industry. It's easy from a tax perspective. It seems like there's something due every month, every month. So there's always something. I mean, in tax season, everybody can jump on that bag wagon in some way or another, like how to deal with the stress or, you know, tips and tricks to smooth this part of it. So But anything like your industry milestones, awareness days, or things that are fun and lighthearted, not everything has to be just Mm -hmm. on that. Um, But it all helps to add variety. So theme, like having some sort of theme for your content calendars. And then the other one is like what we talked about earlier is just be yourself, be authentic, you know, being that genuine, real chiming in on the fly um, that you can share it across multiple platforms, like we already talked about, and it creates that connection like instantly. So it's not something you have to think about. Maybe because we all have those ideas, right? You're randomly walking down the street and like, oh, that would be great. Shoot the video while you're walking and post yeah. it. Or at mm-hmm. least put like a note in your phone so that yeah. you're, you have it while you're thinking of it and you can. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the chat. The resource tools, I know I heard Pocket and then you said Feedsy, F E E D Z Y. Okay. And Buzz Sumo. B U Z Z S S U M M O. S U M O. Okay. So I'm going to pop those in the chat for everybody in case you guys want to check those out as um, 
potential resource tools for your social media postings. I'm going to post this in the chat to everyone. There we go. Um, <laughs> so those are, those are awesome tips. Those are things that we've taken advantage of in the past. I actually love the Google notifications for things that you want to really be made aware of because mm -hmm. we can definitely get like oversaturated with how much stuff is coming to our inbox every day. So two things that I've done that have really helped me is one, I've created like a folder in my inbox for those types of newsletters, right? So rather than just getting like deleting them all because I signed up and now I'm overwhelmed because <laughs> there's 20 of them, I just filter them to that particular box. So then when I am looking for topics or specific information on articles or just to see kind of what was happening in the market for the week, I can go back there when I'm ready instead of feeling overwhelmed in my inbox during my work day. And that has been something that's been really helpful for me to capture that information without, you know, just being like, oh my God, this is too much. I need to get rid of it. Um, Google Alerts has been the other one where I have set notifications, especially for specific industries that our practice works in. So that if I want to get industry notifications about what's going on in the market related to this industry, and that gets obviously sent directly to my email, and then same thing, I can either read it or put it down or what have you. So those are awesome. Can Let's change the topic for a second. This is another one where I, I personally always feel awkward doing this. And so maybe you can give us some tips for like how to reopen the conversation with an old lead. And I think this is probably just my mental head where I'm like, how do I start a conversation with someone that never got back to me or never signed their proposal? But what are some good ways to revisit that conversation so it feels organic and doesn't feel like I'm the used car salesman? Sorry, any <laughs> former used car salesman on the call. <laughs> Um, well, one of the least invasive ways would be just do an email campaign, um, craft mm. up a message. You can either make something generic that, you know, starts the conversation, right. And create a campaign out of it. So if as one way, um, so you can set up, you can automate this fairly quickly. Um, but you know, a touch point, like maybe you do a three to four email series campaign where it's like, Hey, just reaching out, checking in. Or, and then the next one's, if you hadn't noticed, we've added this type of new service, or, you know, here's a cool thing that's relevant in the industry that you're in, like a tip trick, you know, informational thing. Um, uh, and then at the end, like, I would love to chat if you have time to pull the main thing of that is to make sure you have a call to action at the end of each email, like to reach out to you. Um, it might not be as effective as maybe doing direct emails to personalize them a little bit more, like remembering what, um, what you guys were talking about, what the, what reasons, like maybe things have changed, like, you know, bringing up like that relationship you had to have a more custom contact um, and do those tailored emails. Like you can still template most of it out, but add in those personal pieces to be more direct to that uh, client or former client or potential lead you have. I like that. I like that to go back to those original issues that they told mm -hmm. you they were trying to solve. Can you go back to call to action for a second? Cause this is actually yeah. something that you taught me uh, <laughs> in, in, you know, in every piece of content that I develop to think about what I want that call to action to be. So can you explain that a little bit more? Cause the, the point of it is to actually end with, some type of contact. So right. give us an example, like what does a call to action look like at the end of, let's say one of these email campaigns? So the whole point of the call to action is you want them to actually do something. You're taking the time and effort to talk on whatever the topic is, whether it is an email or blog or what have you, um, but they should have a next step. This is what you should do right when we're done. And so for these, it would be like scheduling a discovery call. You know, put your little Cali link in or, you know, your yeah. contact information. Um, it could be signing up for the newsletter or downloading a resource, right? Like maybe you've created something that could really benefit them. Um, but it is that call to action that guides them to that next steps, which converts what their interest they have into an action because it'll just heighten the results that you get out of it. Yeah. Okay. So we have to think about in advance <clears throat> the result what, that we're trying to get. Exactly. Do we want someone to message us? Do we want them to download whatever, you know, document it is that we created? And that's how we create craft that call to mm -hmm. action. And you can even use call to actions to help gauge interest to know who to spend your time on. So mm -hmm. if like your first one, your call to action is like, hey, sign up for our newsletter. Next one, hey, here's a download. 
that might you might find beneficial. If they're doing these call to actions in your next one, hey, let's chat. Schedule some time with me. You That's know? so, so helpful. I think especially during busy season, because we don't want to like we don't want to miss leads, right? Mm-hmm. We're busy right now, but we don't want to miss the opportunity to still have our organizations be growing, especially when it's quality clients. Yes. So I think that is a, an incredible suggestion to say, hey, filter your list this way to pay attention to the people that are interacting with you the most, mm-hmm. because you have the highest likelihood of that forming a relationship if they're, they're absorbing your multiple touch points. Yeah. Um, let's talk about collaboration a little bit more too, because I love this one as well. And you mentioned it at the beginning, we started doing this a little bit in our practice last year, we're collaborating with an HR company now because we were getting so many questions around like payroll and benefits and things that I could speak to the tax piece of it, but I couldn't speak to the rest of it. And so that was just a place that we realized, hey, if we collaborate with another business owner here, it's gonna enhance our client experience. It's gonna help both our businesses grow. Mm -hmm. Um, So can you share a little bit more, like that's kind of the idea, but like what are some areas of collaboration that you've maybe seen work or things that we should look for if we're considering a collaborative effort with someone? Um, So it's again, like to your point, it doesn't have to be in another accounting firm that maybe is just running out of leads, but that's, or people to work leads, like that is an option too, but it is partnering within the industry. You have a HR firm that their clients are going to need tax and maybe your tax needs HR work, right? That's a great mm-hmm. partnership to have. Um, and it's also like added services. You're, you're providing a better client experience at that point too. Um, another thing you can also partner with influencers. We have the people that we follow. Why not reach out and do some collaborative pieces with them? You know, fellow content creators, um, posting blogs and stuff, vice versa, to get message out across different spectrums because we all have our own audience and our own followers. Spread that out. Um, you, we also, all of us are working with different technology partners. We all have the ones that we love. Reach out to them. They have. They get people in all the time that there's potential that you could help with and you could do content work with them. You could do, you know, cross posting with them. Um, But I would leverage these networks that we have that we might not think about and, and not be afraid to like shoot a message because what's the worst they can do? They can say, no, oh darn, go to the next one, right? (laughs) It's not, you know, this huge deal, but it all becomes a win-win situation because not only are you getting your name out there, your clients are getting more services that they need, you're getting content out that both sides are sharing, you know, it becomes a huge collaborative effort across the board for that. The technology partners is one that I think a lot of people miss because Mm -hmm. they're, they're happy to have us, right? To have a real practitioner that's talking about actually using their product. And it's a great way to get exposure for your practice at the same time. But I think that that people miss that one a lot. Mm -hmm. So I know we only have a couple minutes left. I want to leave everybody with some next steps in terms of things that you can actually put into action later today. If you're not on social media or you haven't really been consistently posting, I think that that's a really small way that you can start and it's completely free. Maybe just pick one Mm -hmm. social media outlet, develop a calendar and do the consistency thing for a period of time. I think the other one that's really quick that you could do this afternoon that's free is reviewing your client engagements for upselling opportunities. So to look to see where um, you might have had some scope creep, where you think a client might need some extra help or advisory services on something that they're not taking advantage of right now. Those are all things that could literally be in practice with your organization before the end of the day today that aren't going to cost you a thing. But Brandy, I'm going to put you in the hot seat for a second and ask (laughs) if you could only pick one technique to deploy for your small business marketing strategy, what would it be? Overall or right now today? Right now today. Right now today, I would go upsell. Upsell. It would be the fastest way I could like get some turnaround. Yeah, and we didn't talk about upselling a lot, but I think it's the easiest because you already have the relationship yep. with the client. You and you're only have- adding more value to them. You know their business, you've built that relationship. It's an easy thing to do. And it would be the fastest thing that I, I'm already comfortable with them. So I don't mind talking to them, you know. And, and you already know where the value add is, mm-hmm. right? You already exactly. know where those pot- potential issues are. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. 
All right, well, I will pop it up for questions. If anybody has questions for Brandy, go ahead and pop them in the Q&A box because we're coming right up on 1230. I'm also gonna leave her uh, contact information up here so that you can reach out to her if you have any follow-up questions for her that you wanna ask. Uh, she's amazing. This was amazing. I feel like every time you and I talk about this topic, <laughs> I have like new ideas of things to go back that I can put into place. So I very much appreciate you. Of course. I'm happy to be here. I love like spouting off random ideas. It's my favorite thing about you. If I want to have an innovative, creative conversation, I know who to call and you Me. will, I will walk <laughs> away with so many ideas of things that I could have, would have, should have been <laughs> like a doing. Superpower. <laughs> yes. yes. Awesome. Well, we're right at 1230. So I will pop down the content and if anyone has any questions please feel free to reach out to us we're always happy to answer them and brandy again thank you so much for being thank here. you all right awesome. thanks so much you guys that was that was really good i actually took notes <laughs> <laughs> perfect that's what we yeah. want yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, well, right before I actually close out the webinar, I just want to remind everyone again that we have another webinar that is closely related to this. To this. It, it is Marketing Talks with Janelle Sikora. And whether you're interested in practice management, marketing, everything tax, or all things QuickBooks, Insightful Accountants got something for you. You can check out all of our other webinars that are available to you over on the educational webinars page on our site. And do not worry because it's always going to be there and it's always going to be updated every month for a webinar for you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We will see you again for next month's tax talks. Bye. Have a good day.